So Michael's actually um, a current competing um, athlete, so he um, is a really nice way to bring together all the different um, talks that we've already heard tonight. So Michael um, is an Australian track and road cyclist um, and currently rides for Pro Racing Sunshine Coast. He's the current Australian National Road Race Champion. In the past years. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and he's won Commonwealth Gold and Silver um, in 2010, and was also the Omnium World Champion in 2011. But that's not enough. He's also, um, in his spare time, developed a resistance training unit called the Air Hub um, that we'll be hearing about tonight, um, which is designed to simulate mountain riding on flat roads um, and is used by a number of UCI World <laughs> Tour professionals in their training. Um, thanks everyone for coming down. Um, I've seen some really great presentations here tonight. Um, I'm sure we're all learning a fair bit. What I'm going to talk about today is uh, the performance tools that I use daily um, and that a lot of people in the sport use as well. So a lot of people might have already seen the stuff I'm going to talk about. Um, a lot might be new to a lot of people. So if it's new to you, ask some questions afterwards and um, you will be happy to to walk you through it. Um, I've done a lot of bike racing in the last 10, 15 years. Um, as we just heard, I was a world champion in 2011, went to the Commonwealth Games, um, won the NRS in 2017 after a, after a five year break, and uh, then came to win the national road race last year, which is probably my, um, my most favorite result yet. Um, in my spare time, uh, in 2013, I started the Air Hub Project. It's an on-road resistance training device. And, um, and we'll hear a bit more about that later. Um, firstly, I want to introduce you to the most powerful tool ever created. So this is something I use on a daily basis. Um, so it's really simple to use. This is Google, Google Scholar. All you gotta do is open up your phone, type in Google Scholar, and up will come the most comprehensive research search tool on the planet. So um, this has got all the knowledge and all the millions and billions of dollars that everyone's spent on knowledge, and it's all dropped into this, indexed into this search engine. So you can put anything you like in here. You can ask about the aerodynamic drag. You can ask about Chris Froome's power output, altitude training, hypertrophy. You can look up sodium bicarbonate, loading protocols, caffeine loading protocols, um, and it brings up some really, really great information. This one here is by Stephen Sellier, looking at the difference between doing four by 16 minute efforts or four by eight minute efforts. And it gives you a great comparison on the two and which one he found was to work better. Once you click through the link, you can get through to the full paper. You can have a read through that. You can find out what they exactly did, who, who the participants were, and you can really understand and then apply that to your own training. So if you've got a spare couple of weeks, you can test out this protocol and really see if it works for you. Um, there's a lot of other stuff you can do in Google Scholar to really have a deep dive. Um, there's so many great scientists on there. We'll see coming up here is Louise Burke, um, one of Australia's top scientist. She's been in the AAS for, for quite a number of years. Um, and it just has some really good information. See here, so I had to refine my search to, to work with elite athletes and not just the general population and also to associate it with performance sports. So you've got to remember to get your keywords right. If you can get your keywords right on this, you can find out anything you want. Um, yeah, so look, there's, there's, there's tons of information there. Um, I'm going to click on one of these up in a sec. Fueling strategies to optimize performance. Should you train high or should you train low? Um, and that's one of the really popular articles coming out at the moment. Should you go low carb or high carb? Again, you hit on the PDF button there and it brings you up the full study and gives you access to everything that, um, that they published. Uh, if you go back to the search engine before, you can see that there's a lot more information if you know where to find it. So just underneath, there's a cited by. So what if you click that button, it'll give you all the information that's come after that, that reference the initial document. So if you're looking for the latest information, you can go in there and you can pull up everything that come after and it can give you a massive amount of information that's, um, that's the latest and greatest. So all the scientists in the country around the world are going to be publishing this. Um, yeah, as we've said, use the cited by button, uh, read the whole study and not just the abstract. Um, the most important thing you can do is get your keywords right. So I've got my own list of keywords whenever I'm looking into a subject. Um, you look into the discussion and the introduction sections, and this is where you really generate your knowledge. A lot of the stuff in the research, in the results section, can be a little bit too complex at times for most people, but you're going to get a lot of the knowledge that you can use on a daily basis from the introduction and discussion sections. Mm -hmm. um, 
search for keywords. The Google Scholar is an indexing system, so don't ask it, you know, what's the best clothes to wear for cycling or, or what's the best food I should eat. You've got to type in um, low carb, high carb performance or elite athletes, Kenyan runners diet. And that'll give you the best information and you filter through that yourself to try and find out what you want. Um, great, okay. So the next thing I really want to talk about is one of the analytics tools that I use. So there's two main ones that, the, that are used by all the top coaches in the planet. So that's WKO is by Training Peaks and Golden Cheetah is the open source one. Golden Cheetah syncs with your today's plan, Training Peaks only syncs, uh, WKO only syncs with your Training Peaks. So this is a really cool, um, really cool uh, way to bring in the massive amounts of data that everyone generates on their bike every day. So this, um, this big power meter data coming in, this heart rate map data coming in, and you've got to be able to look at it and disseminate and try and understand what actually happened in your race. Uh, so this is my file from Nationals, and you can see here that all the peak powers have come up at the bottom of the screen. You can click on them, and it'll give you a breakdown of what actually happened. It's got the climbs highlighted, so you can deep dive into the climbs. Um, and there's a few more charts on heart rate, power, speed, and anything else you can really think of. All these charts are available in these programs. What Prime is a really cool um, algorithm that's been developed and integrated into these uh, analytics programs. This is again the national road race again. So what What Prime is, it basically tells you about what's your reserve capacity. So you see those numbers at the bottom of the chart where it gets down to 2.4 and 3.5. That's a number that when it hits zero, I can't turn the pedals anymore. So it, there's a when you have your average power and your heart rate and stuff in a criterion, it doesn't really tell the full story because you might get really fatigued one point in the race and then have a rest and then the power might come back up. Whereas this shows you on a graph what the difficult points were in the race and uh, where you failed and maybe next time how you can work on those. With all this custom analytics power and all the data that you're generating on a daily basis, you can go through and create your own trends and graphs. So the green line at the top there is my 20 minute power that's going from 2015 I think all the way to 2019. It's a five week rolling average. And I've got an association there with the amount of loading and, and total workload I do per year, um, my time in zone and a few different other factors that sort of gives me a trend to try and understand what's happening in my body and how do I respond to the load. So if you start moving into this sort of training tools, you can have a look and build your own little charts, a lot like you do with financial models and things like that, and understand what's happening in your body and how to assess the data that comes out of it. Second, we look at the WKO stuff. The WKO stuff is a little bit more different, it's a bit cleaner. It works heavily on the power curve, so it pulls in all your data um, and understands what's going on from there. The most important part here is to have clean data. So a lot of the power meters out there can sometimes give you erroneous data, power spikes, things like that. So you want to get them out of your, out of your data before you get into it. The next thing we look at is eye level. So this is almost the future of training. Um, what the WKO system does is it goes through and checks out all your power data and it allocates it into different bins of uh, basically adaptation zones. So we can look up here as your, your Pmax, which is your peak power. You can look at your max aerobic capacity and your FTP. And then it goes through and tells you how long your interval should be and how many watts you should target. Um, it also gives you a recommended repetition range and a rest zone. So each person's curve is going to be a little bit different. It may be, someone may be more of a sprinter or some may, may be more of an endurance rider. And so those times will, will vary depending on where, what type of athlete you are and where in the season you are. So sometimes my max aerobic training zones are down at the three minute mark because I'm really punchy, uh, really um, aerobic at that point in time. And sometimes I can stretch it all the way out to the six minute mark because I've got so much anaerobic reserve and I've got to burn through that before I can really start to push my VO2 max. Another thing they do is being able to calculate all those things and use the almost artificial intelligence to give you your zones, it breaks it down into what is your anaerobic work and what is your aerobic work. So you see from the two minute mark through the seven hour mark, it all relies on aerobic uh, using oxygen to create mechanical work. Um, and that's a great breakdown. We'll go that into that in a bit in a second. Um, so yeah, so in about 2013, I, I, um, I started looking at all this stuff and understanding that in the future, at some point in the future, I'm going to start to understand what my best training style is 
how I'm going to get the best performance out of myself, how I'm going to optimize the recovery. There's so much information out there that eventually I'll work it out. But the problem is going to be how do I execute? You can have all the knowledge in the world, but in the end, at the end of the day, you've actually got to go and ride your bike and put that knowledge into practice. So the Air Hub for me was the obvious step, the obvious next step. The Air Hub allows you to increase your training loads on the road. So if you've got uh, an area where it's all flat and there's not many hills, you can increase the resistance, increase your um, uh, increase your power rate, increase your heart rate, and increase the probability of you achieving your training target. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of the load curves I was looking at here talked about um, increasing your workload, and so the Air Hub was able to put me into those training zones more often. Um, and the great thing about that is you can work with more people um, in more places at more times. So the Air Hub was a step forward in applying knowledge that we already had of um, risk recovery and endurance and really getting it to happen on the road whenever you need it to happen. And closing tips. So um, the most important part, thing you can do when you're trying to build a performance plan is look through the research and understand where you want to go. Uh, most people focus on trying to hit personal best every day. I don't recommend you can do that because it's going to get to a point in time where you're going to hit your ceiling and you're not going to be able to PB again. So the next step you need to do is be able to achieve 95% or 98% of that personal best on any given day under any conditions. So it's more of a performance, a probability of performance rather than absolute performance. It's sometimes also best to undershoot the session instead of overshoot it. There's a lot of information and research training coming out at the moment where if you push too hard in a single session, you could get an injury, a stress fracture, um, you could twinge a muscle and that will wipe you out for two weeks. So you want to slightly undershoot your session and build that consistency so you stay healthy and, um, and can keep that general load in there. Yep, and so the last point is to look at a three week average load. If you're building a training plan, look at how your training session today is gonna to impact you in two or three weeks time and that's probably the best way not to overshoot. Thanks, Ed.